Yesterday, New Orleans remembered one of the women, Ruby Bridges, who made history by walking into France Elementary School. Her steps were recreated Friday by students at the Ninth Ward School. And now we want to bring you an interview Sally Ann Roberts did with Bridges 10 years ago for the 50th anniversary. Here you are with Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille, I actually did the Read to Achieve uh, program with him in Los Angeles. Walt Frazier, and this was in uh, New York. The New York. Ruby Bridges is a civil rights icon who speaks to schools and community groups around the country. Her Jefferson Parish home is filled with mementos of her achievements, among them a Presidential Citizens Medal she received from Bill Clinton. And there's an elementary school named after her in Alameda, California a very diverse, mixed school. Her award-winning book, Through My Eyes, is filled with archival photographs of crowds that greeted her at William France Elementary School in 1960. This whole street was lined with people, and uh, on both sides of the street, and they were screaming and shouting, and they were throwing things, but it looked like they were waving their hands. And uh, I remember police officers being on horseback, motorcycles. So I actually thought I was in the midst of a parade. I thought it was Mardi Gras that day. They were chanting two, four, six, eight, we don't want to integrate. And I think that stuck with me, being six, it, it rhymed. The first grader didn't realize when U.S. Marshals escorted her into France school that she was making history. Did they seem like very big steps back oh, then? Oh, absolutely. I remember that. They seemed like, you know, the school was huge. And the stairs, you know, seemed really, really big. France School is in the process of being rebuilt in the wake of Katrina. But this gutted building holds many memories for Ruby, especially room 215, where she met her teacher, Mrs. Henry. And she said, come in and take a seat. And I remember standing here and looking into this very room and seeing just empty desk. So I really thought that my mother had brought me to school too early that day. But she hadn't. Well, probably years too early in their minds. Ruby spent most of the year alone in that classroom being taught by Mrs. Henry. She says Barbara Henry was a compassionate teacher. Eventually, some white children returned to school, and she learned later their families experienced the same type of harassment her family experienced. There were some white parents who tried to cross that picket line to bring their kids to school with me. They were not protected by federal marshals. And there's some actual footage where they're being interviewed and they talked about how they were harassed, how their husbands were fired. Ruby says through it all, she grew in her faith. My mom used to say, oh, don't worry about those people. They're crazy. They need praying for. And I believe that because she also said, Ruby, if you, you know, if you're ever afraid and I'm not with you, you can always say your prayers. And for me, my prayers worked. Ruby went on to graduate from high school and married Malcolm Hall. They've been together for more than three decades and have four children, but they've also known tragedy. In April of 2005, their son Dana was driving on I-10 with his two young children when someone drove up and opened fire. My grandson was shot through his knee and once through his ankle. He had to learn how to walk all over again. And my granddaughter was hurt in the accident, but my son uh, was shot through the shoulder and the bullet lodged in the back of his neck. They survived, but she says her oldest son, Craig, was determined to track down suspects by speaking to witnesses. And I remember looking at him and saying, it's just leave it alone. And he just said, no, Mom. You know, somebody has to say something. This is ridiculous. This has to stop. Craig never got the answer he was looking for. The husband and doting father was murdered July 4, 2005. The next month, Katrina swamped the family's New Orleans East home. Then when Hurricane Katrina hit, it really kind of snapped me out of a state of depression that I was in. I really felt like, you know, my world had changed so much that now Everything was changed and new, and it was a new beginning. Ruby Bridges, a symbol of the civil rights movement of the 60s, sees education as an answer to today's civil rights challenge. So I see this school as a portal 
not just to bring kids together, not just to teach history the way history happened, but also to resurrect a neighborhood. And um, for some reason, that seems like a very grandiose plan to most people. But I always say that it was a grandiose plan that brought me up these stairs 50 years ago. Since that story first aired, France Elementary has reopened as the Keeley Academy of New Orleans. Also, Ruby Bridges' mother, Lucille, whom she talked about in that story, died this past week at the age of 86. In an Instagram post, Ruby Bridges called her mom a hero, brave, progressive, and a champion for change.